it seems to me that I have a love-hate relationship with Microsoft Windows. Alternating versions, either I love them or I hate them. So like back with Windows XP, loved it. Windows Vista, not a huge fan. Then Windows 7 came along, I liked it. So guess what happens with Windows 8? Not a huge fan. Now, in this episode, touring Windows 8, what we're gonna do is do a quick run over of Windows 8 and the quick upgrade Windows 8.1 to give you an idea of what this particular version of Windows brought to the table. Now, the best place to start with Windows 8 is right when you walk up to the machine with the famous lock screen. This, my friends, is the beautiful Windows 8 lock screen. Now, if I click anywhere on here, you'll notice that it puts me right into my login screen. Now, this is different from what we saw with previous versions of Windows. You would have a login screen that would come up, or you would have a screensaver running, you'd hit the screensaver and a login screen would come up. But the lock screen gave Windows an opportunity to just give you a nice pretty overview that didn't allow people to make any mistakes. In particular, people would have a habit of walking away from machines. Now, early versions of Windows had ways where you could require a password to log in and stuff like that. But starting with Windows 8, it really became a requirement and a lock screen was an important part of that. Now, while we're looking at this lock screen, let's take a look right here. What you're looking at is my Microsoft account. Now, people look at this and they're always confused. What is Mike Tohale M. Myers? Well, that's actually just Hotmail backwards. I learned a long time ago that if you give people uh, user account stuff, if you embed something in there to know where it came from, when I get spam and it says, Dear Mike Hotelium, then I know it came from Hotmail. But you don't have to do all that cool stuff. What's important here is that Windows 8 introduced the idea of being able to log into Windows using your Microsoft account. Now, it didn't do a lot in Windows 8. We'd see a lot more with Windows 8.1 and then Windows 10, but it allows for synchronization of different types of account information. So let's go ahead and log in. The single biggest change that came with Windows 8 was the introduction of what Microsoft called the Metro UI. Now the Metro UI is still around with later versions of Windows and it's gone through some name changes, but the term Metro has kind of stuck for this interface and I'm gonna use it, CompTIA uses it, and you should use it too. So as we take a look at this, what you're looking at with the Metro UI are, well, first of all, these are known as tiles. So these tiles replace icons for starting programs. Now I can pick an individual tile and if you take a look at this particular program, you're going to see this is what we call a Windows app. It goes straight to full screen and it is designed to work exclusively with the Metro interface. Now I can hit the Windows key and it always brings me right back to my Metro desktop. Now these individual tiles can be moved and they can be resized. We can do all kinds of stuff with this to organize it. We can put titles at the tops of columns. We can do all kinds of cool stuff. The only challenge to the Metro UI is that, well, a lot of us still use a lot of Windows programs. Now on this system, I do have some old Windows programs, so let's go ahead and use it right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the desktop, and ta-da, it brings back the desktop. But now look down in the lower left-hand corner here, folks. There is no old school start button. So this was the big change with Windows 8. It got rid of that, and well, we'll talk about that in a moment. Anyway, what I've got, if we take a look in this folder, I've got a utility program, C CPU ID, that I use a lot. And I want to put that as a tile onto my Metro interface. So in Windows 8, you just right click on it and you click pin to start. And again, I'm just going to hit the Windows key. And there you go. CPU ID is treated as a tile just like a Windows app. So if you've got a program that's designed to run on the Metro user interface, we call it a Windows app. Otherwise, it's just an old school Windows program. Now, I wanna take a look at that Windows app one more time. So when I click on it, the big thing I want you to notice right here is that we don't have any minimize, any maximize. There, there's nothing there. With Windows 8, all of your Windows apps ran by default, full screen, that's it, no choice. So we get back to our desktop. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I want to show you this little tile right here, and that's called store. Now what I'm going to do in here is let's go ahead and fire up the store, 
And this is part of the beauty of being able to log in using your Microsoft account with Windows, is that it gives you access to the store. There are all kinds of different applications you can buy in here. Some of them you have to pay for, but a lot of them are free. So let's play a fun game. And here's good old Klondike Solitaire, always a fave. We can see it's free. Let's go ahead and install it. Wow, that was quick. So we now have a true Windows app installed. So let's take a look in the desktop and see if we've got it. Ah, there it is. So I'm going to move that over here just because I like things nice and pretty. And you can see if I want to, I can start this program up. Let me close that. And there we go. We're playing Klondike Solitaire. Now, I want you to take a look at some of these tiles here. If you notice, some of these tiles actually move. Those are what we call live tiles. Otherwise, they're simply just tiles or static tiles. The Windows 8 user interface, bringing in the Metro UI, well, there's a lot of people who didn't like it. It's not that I have a problem with the Metro user interface. People who use Windows Phone or tablets, for example, love it, and I'm a big fan of it. The problem was, in my opinion, it was a bit too much of a shock for a lot of people, so they kind of said, we don't we want our start button back, and that's where Microsoft brought in the update to Windows 8, Windows 8.1. I've got a copy right here. So this is Windows 8.1. Now, if you take a look at the start screen, the Metro UI has got a few changes to it that make it a little bit nicer. For example, if I want to, I can do a lot more resizing granularity than I could before, whereas before I could just go smaller and larger in increments, it gives me some nice little presets so I can set my tiles however I want. We also have a nice little pull down that brings up every application that is on my computer, which makes it a little bit easier to find an app that you might need. But that's not all. So the other big thing I want to do here is we take a look, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit my Windows key on my keyboard and we're in the desktop. Ta-da! So that's nice, but I want you to look in the lower left-hand corner here. That's right, folks. Windows 8.1 brought back the start button, but not quite the way we want. If I click on this, watch what happens. Yeah, it just brings back the uh, Metro desktop start screen. Now, it's a better thing because at least we have that button, which makes us feel better. That's important but it really wasn't until Windows 10 that we really got to see this put together, at least in the way that I like. Anyway, let me show you one more really important thing while we're in here. Now I'm gonna right click, and you can see we have a number of preset connections to a lot of really important utilities. In my opinion, that was like one of the nicest features that they brought in, because now I can right click and I can go to device manager and disk management, my task manager, all kinds of tools, just a right click and you get right there. Okay, now one more thing I want to do before we head out is I'm going to pick a program here. So let's pick, uh, oh, photos. I don't think I have much in the way of photos on here. But what I want you to see, what we didn't have in Windows 8 is that we can now close and minimize applications. So I'm going to close this and I'm right back to a desktop. So that, folks, is really all you need to know for Windows 8.1. Hey, mate, what about the charms bar? What about the charms bar? The charms bar. All right. There are certain utilities that I personally have never been a big fan of that were in Windows 8 and 8.1. And in particular, we need to talk about the charms bar. The charms bar was nothing more than a tool that allowed you a quick little one-stop shopping for a lot of utilities that people need for different applications. So here in Windows 8.1, and by the way, this was in Windows 8 also, so I just go to the upper right-hand corner and I scroll down, and this is the charms bar. So basic features like searching, share, a straight shot to the desktop from this button, as well as a couple of utilities, and we'll just take a look at devices. It's a quick little way to get to a lot of the stuff that you need. Windows 10 dumps the charms bar, but with Windows 8 and 8.1, it was there, and a lot of us did nothing more than taught ourselves how to turn it off, because every time you went to the right, it was like, bang. And that, folks, is your tour of Windows 8 and Windows 8.1, brought to you by the fine folks at Why We Love Windows 10.